to the Congregational Church of Algonquin, the United Church of Christ. Whether you're here because worshiping with us is part of your routine, or whether you've stopped by because you feel like our country has stopped in its track and that it may be impossible for us to return to normal. Today, we gather here with you to proclaim that we belong to one another and that others belong to us. Broken hearts are welcome here. Anxious spirits are welcome here. If you have found yourself depressed, impatient, lonely, feeling helpless, you are welcome here. As a congregation called together by God and God's Holy Spirit, we have something fragile and something powerful. Our need to be together. Our need to reconnect to the life-giving source that moves within and among us. And our need to make one another a little bit braver and wiser before we return to the service of life. Today we gather to especially mourn the death of all of those who have died in this pandemic. It is a somber time but it is also a time of thanksgiving for those lives that have been cut short. So come as we meet a loving God who knows our pain and offers us His grace. Would you join me in prayer? O oh God, embrace in your loving arms all who are grieving the loss of family and loved ones through tragic circumstance. Where lives are in turmoil, hope turns to despair, and pain is all that's felt. O God, be with them in their sorrow. Uphold them with your strength. And through the generosity of love shown by others and your presence within their hearts, may they know that they are not alone in their struggle. Amen. Reading from God's Holy Word, in this Easter season, we read again from the Gospel of John. Jesus said, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Here ends the reading of God's holy word. May you take it, and may you get comfort and strength from these words of Jesus Christ. Amen. As I prepared for the service this morning, I saw that the number of people in the United States who have died from the COVID virus has now reached over 88,000. 88,000 people who have died in just the last couple of months from an enemy that we cannot even see. Now, I don't know about you, but it is difficult for me to put that number in my mind. When I usually think of grief, when I've experienced grief, it's been the grief of a death of one person. A death last year of my mother, or before that of my father. It is a grief that you can hold on to, a grief that you can identify with when you grieve one person. But how do you grieve the death of over 88,000? And, if you think about it in the whole world, it's over 300,000 people 
human beings, individuals. What do we do with that? Well, I want to suggest that we don't look at the number, but we look at our relationships. Jesus said when he was leaving his disciples that he would be with them forever. But he also said that he was sending, as he was leaving, to go to his Father, he was sending to us his Holy Spirit. And it is with the Holy Spirit now that we can find the presence of God. And when he sent the Holy Spirit, he sent it to be with each and every one of us. It doesn't hover, hover over all of the people in the world. It is not the head of some religion, but it is a living, beating power within our very hearts. That is our advocate. And so today, as we try to make sense of the people who have died and who continue to die of this virus, of this pandemic, we need to start by locating our grief where it can actually bring us peace. And that is in the Holy Spirit that is within us. It's a hard situation. It's a difficult situation. It's an unfathomable thought that your loved one can go into a hospital and die without you being able to be there. To say your last words, to hold their hands. It is not just a death and a grieving of a death, but it is as if that loved one has just been erased from your life taken away. What do we do with that? One reporter was talking to a professor at Drake University, a woman by the name of Nancy Burns, who tried to put it into perspective by saying that the grief that we hold for the loss of a loved one is part of a larger grief that we all are experiencing now. She explains it this way. Besides the loss of your loved one, there are additional losses. She says it's not just losing an individual, a loved one in your life, and grieving the loss of that person. But, it is grieving the loss of those times that you thought you would have when they were dying or being able to show the sacred rituals associated with that time. It is the loss of being able to say goodbye. She goes on to say this, that what is important for us to understand is that when you are expecting to be able to use your traditional rituals, whatever those are for your family, and then you can't use those rituals, then that in itself can feel like a loss. And that's what it is. It is a death in which we are not able to say goodbye. It is a death and a relationship that we are not able to bring to a successful conclusion. And this is where God's Holy Spirit comes into us and helps us to understand. 
Because God tells us through Jesus Christ that it is never a good body. But we have traditions, and we have funerals, and we say prayers, and we say our goodbyes when we can be in the room with someone who is passing. But we also hear from the Word of God to take heart that even though the body passes away, the spirit is very much alive. And so, we can count 88,000, 100,000, 200,000 people dying from the virus. And what God is saying is that those are bodies that are gone. But those are spirits that are with me. And those are spirits and souls and relationships and individuals that will go and live forever with me. And that God will not separate them from us because He is not separate from us. They are with Him and He is with us. And we can take heart. But there's another thing that the Holy Spirit is telling us now. And that is that as we are here, as we are in this mortal existence, that it is our responsibility not only to mourn and grieve, but to celebrate. To celebrate the lives and the relationships of those people who have been taken away from us in this body, in this life, by the virus. We cannot let the virus conquer the love that exists between us and those who have passed away. We cannot let the virus pandemics take away from us the joy that we know in people who have made a difference in our lives. And so it is our responsibility to stand up in the face of pandemics and stand up in the face of viruses and stand up in the face of tragedy and to proclaim that the joy that we have in relationship is still and always will be alive. We don't need to say goodbye to a parent, a child, or a friend whose body has been taken from us because God has assured us that their spirit and their love will always be with us. And so, on this day in which we mourn the passing, let us celebrate the relationship. On this day, when we recognize and feel the pain of our grief, let us also feel and be moved by the hope that we are still together because God, in His wisdom and in His grace, has made us eternal. And so we can celebrate. As Jesus is with us, as the Holy Spirit is with us, so our loved ones are with us. And it is the power of God that we will use to step forward in our lives. Once again, let us pray. O oh God of compassion, we come with hearts of sorrow, grieving for the loss of the life of so many people 
around the world. Surrounded those whose lives have been torn by the tragedy of this pandemic with a sense of your comforting love. Grant us your wisdom so that the impotence that we feel does not turn into anger that will lead us to lash out against one another. For it is not just the death of our loved ones that we grieve, but also the death of community and the death of security. O God of wonders, we trust your supremacy over all. You weave goodness from terrible happenings. So we ask you to come and make good come from this evil. Where there is despair, bring hope. Where there is suspicion and hatred, bring compassion. Where there is pain, bring healing. O God of peace, we come surrendered to you. You have asked us to take up our cross. For those of us who are survivors, may we be envoys of your love. May we be envoys of your hope. May we be your envoys of faith. Bring your wholesome peace to our ravaged world, O Lord. So that we, like Paul and Silas before us, who sang hymns while in prison, now seek to worship you. And now come to adore you with work, with hymns, and with the sacrifice of our lives. Will God accept our worship in Jesus' name? We ask it for his sake as we pray with him. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now may God bring comfort to those coming to terms with the unexpected loss of a loved one. May God bring healing to those who are alive but broken. May God bring unity to those working for peace and understanding between communities. And may God bring his warmth to those whose hearts are cold and empty. And may his blessing be on all who in such times are there to share his love. Amen. Mm -hmm.